Good morning from Charleston, South Carolina, where day two of Charleston Race Week is about to begin. Hi, I'm Ashley Love, and last night was quite the party. Gosling's rum was flowing, debris footage and daily highlights were running on the Jumbotron, and live bands, which happen every night, had sailors dancing the night away. This morning, we head to racing circle number one, where the VX1s, G24s, G22s, and Perf inshore fleets take the stage. VX1s are the first to start right off of the edge of downtown Charleston, and Doug Clark Sideshow is leading the division so far. The VX1s are sporting 39 boats, mostly travel boats, and this is one of the bigger divisions that has a mixed plus section going on, more than 50% women. Today we have a different wind direction, which means the tide is pulling everyone from the boat towards the pin at a very rapid rate. J24s are off the line next. Bow 24 is our class leader, Marcus Rogers, wind monkey. Second from the boat on that start, Matadora, Daniel Road. We met him on the dock. The boat is Matadora, which is a female bullfighter. I'm Andy Parker, bowman on Matadora. And you're locals around here, so tell me about Carolina Yacht Club and the conditions out here. Uh, the conditions are just about perfect. It's like a Chamber of Commerce day. It's 10 to 15 knots, might be gust to 20. So. Um, it's in a lot of people's wheelhouses, so the competition should be really close and fairly even. Are there a lot of 24s around here? Uh, there usually is a fleet about maybe 8 to 10. We're all friends. Uh, most of the guys grew up here. We've been sailing together for what, about five years? Yep, yep. All right, down now. Pop the jib, pop the jib. Third off the line, the combined J22s and Perf Inshore. Perf Inshore has four boats out here. And going into today, Tim LaRiviere's Eagle One is winning from Detroit, Michigan. The X1s are at the bottom of their first lap. And first around, 275, Connor Bluen from College of Charleston, followed closely by Christopher Alexander and Maddie Gill on Counterproductive. Go, Ricky, go, Ricky, nice. Nice work, out, hold on. So when did you get this tough? This is our breeze. some quick race committee work. We have a mark in the water again, and we are in a different river over here, the Ashley River, the deepest part of the Ashley River. So the current is ripping. Boats are short tacking around the white mark to make it around in this tight current. No lead change so far. J22s are around next in this in a big puff. The College of Charleston has most of their boats out here.
Everyone's getting all mixed up around this top mark. Eagle One, our leader in perf, around next with their kite flying. It is so up and down in terms of the breeze here, but the current never turns off. So when we got a light spot here, everyone got piled up trying to get around the top mark. Alexander and Maddie Gill in the VX1. Tell me about the VX1 fleet around here. Yeah, a lot of boats have traveled, you know, from around the country to, to be here. And uh, yeah, it's a great fleet. Everyone, one of, uh, I think tied for our biggest regatta ever, actually, with 36 boats on the line. Last year was really tight. I think it came down three or more boats even were in contention for the top spot until the last race, the last leg of the last race. So it was really fun to have such tight racing and I think it's only gotten tighter this year. There's more pressure building on this left. Today we're hoping to get our uh, our throw out yesterday taken care of and keep moving up. Finished second here three times in a row, so I'm trying not to do that again. Wow, the difference between the lead VX1s and the back of the pack is almost a leg and a half. Connor Bluen could not be caught. Crossing the line next and Christopher Alexander with crew, Maddie Gill around in second. J22s and Perf Inshore around their lured mark Clemson University team around in first for the 22s. Second perf boat around, Whiskey and Knives. The first boat around, an Evelyn 32, Eagle One. Catching up with the J24s, and Matadora is in the lead, a local, obviously using that knowledge of his. Here comes the wind. Not too much. They're a little higher. Come higher. Come back up. There you go. Gained a little more. Good job. Pulling away from the fleet in the last couple meters of the finish line. Dan, Roggy, and team nail that coffin in on the first race of day two at Charleston Race Week. The VX1s begin their second race while Perf, Inshore, and J22s come down to their finish. Eagle One has lost a lot of ground on Whiskey and Knives. If you watched any of the Chicago Mac coverage, you would recognize this name, Tim LaRivier and Eagle One, a different Eagle One of his, a much larger one, won the Chicago Mac this last year in 2021. And they've at least got line honors for this race, but they probably owe a lot of time to the boats behind. We've moved over to circle number three where the J105s are about to get in their second start of the day. The current is ripping them from the boat towards the pin and everyone is calling for ups. Blowboat is getting buried here trying to find a way to push their competitors over the line. They are leading this race or this division so far. 201 does not want to comply. Number two zero, they did get pushed over the line early. Trying to play the right side, it's Joyride, bow 21, Martin Zonji from the Charleston Yacht Club. ORCD already on their first downwind leg. 
Guillotine, Thomas Luttrell in the lead of this race, but at least in fourth overall for the fleet. When the current is ripping at your top mark, it is always very smart to come in on the last tack on the tack more directly into that current, and Skimmer did that exactly. Miles Marchink, Ben Buckley Green, and Elizabeth Hunt on board. Blowboat hailing from Red Bank, New Jersey, around in second. They have about a minute and a half to make up on the leader. Oh, some of these boats were able to sneak up around the mark with their momentum, but not spectacle. Making a spectacle of themselves, and everyone saw it. Right into a spin they go. ORCD on their second upwind leg, and the Melgis 32s still leading the way. 74 looking to cover their competition, maybe? No, they're going to send it all the way to lay. Oh, nope, they're going to cover. Melgis 32s coming in. We got Patriot trying to call overlap. Approaching this first top mark, it might be confusing to you where we are on the race course, but this is an upwind mark. It's just that the current is so strong. Kevin McNeil, bow 40, in the far 30, is leading the fleet overall. Cougar, the mascot of College of Charleston, hence the name, trying to call a ley line from way out here in this current. They're just, just keep going, guys. Just keep going. The J88s are on their way upwind, and a big duck for William Purdy on Whirlwind, trying to get behind the stern of blue, Brian O'Malley. Andy Graff on Exile, leading the J88s from Chicago, Corinthian Yacht Club. The lead J105s are catching up with the back of the 88s, and the shifts up here are insane. The windward mark is in lefty out of the Ashy River, and the bottom mark is in righty out of the Cooper River with that different current. Completely wild for these tacticians to figure out. But the locals, John picked Pit Kavage on spectacle, unspectacled themselves, even after hitting the windward mark and having to do a spin, they crushed this race in the 105s. And in the J88s, Andy Graff on exile from the Cor Chicago Corinthian Yacht Club could not be caught. That wraps up our coverage of day two of Charleston Race Week. Make sure you check out the shows on YouTube and all of the coverage on Facebook. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow for racing action from day three.